In this tutorial, we show how to generate and test a minimal ESP SOC. To run full system simulation of a default ESP SOC, as well as to generate an, e an FPGA B-stream for it, it takes as little as one make target. However, in this tutorial, we want to show a bit of what's underneath and all the steps for going on FPGA and running tests in bare metal and on top of Linux. Everything described in this tutorial is also detailed in a written guide on our website. You can find the link in the video description. We also provide pre-built material to skip directly to the FPGA testing without executing all the previous steps. The instructions to do so are at the end of the written guide I just mentioned. ESP currently supports multiple FPGA boards, as of today three of them. In uh, SOCs, you can find one design folder for each of the boards, ProFPGA board, VC707, and VCU118. The steps described in this tutorial are identical regardless of the target board, but they should be run from the design folder corresponding to the target board. In this tutorial, we target the VC707 board, which mounts a Vertex 7 FPGA and so we move inside the proper design folder. The first step for generating an ESP SOC is the SOC configuration. For each design target, there are default configurations and they are listed in the def config folder. There are two types of configuration, as we will see, one is the ESP configuration and one is the grlib configuration. Starting with the ESP configuration, we can see it graphically. So you see that the default is a 2x2 mesh with one CPU tile, one memory tile containing, containing a memory controller and a link to main memory, and one I.O. tile. Here in the ESP GUI, you can choose between a Spark V8 32-bit Leon 3 processor and a RISC-V 64-bit Ariane processor. The processors come with their own L1 caches. You can choose whether or not to add the ESP caches as well. A private L2 cache in the CPU tiles and a directory based last level cache in the memory tiles. You can also freely move tiles around as it doesn't affect functionality. To save any changes, you should click on generate SOC config and then close the window. Now, there is another type of configuration, which is grlib. We can see the user interface also for this one. ESP embeds some IPs from the open source VHDL library called grlib, and this includes the Leon3 processor. It also includes some peripherals, and the only relevant configuration setting here are the static IP and the MAC assigned to the ESP debug interface. A host machine can control the debug interface of an ESP SOC only through Ethernet. That is the only option available. Through the debug window you can set the IP and MAC addresses and in this case we are going to keep the defaults but the written guide has a lot of details on why you would change this and how. At this point, only one more step before we are able to run RTL simulation. The caches are enabled, as we saw in the ESP GUI. And as of today, in ESP, the caches are specified in System C. And high-level synthesis with Cadence Stratus HLS is required to generate a Verilog implementation. We will soon waive this requirement by releasing a very long version of the caches, but for the time being, high-level synthesis is needed. Additionally, in the upstream release, the ESP caches do not work yet with the Ariane core, but this feature is going to um, be released soon. The ESP cache hierarchy is not mandatory in this case because we are creating a single core SOC but it is mand mandatory for multi-core SOCs and for the cases where accelerator styles are working coherently um, and you will see that in the next tutorials. 
on Ubuntu, I need to export one additional environment variable before launching the HLS tool, uh, as described in the setup tutorial. To launch the generation of the caches, there are two simple targets, make L2 HLS and LLC HLS. This step takes a while, especially the first time when the HLS tool has to synthesize hardware resources for the target technology. In the meantime, we can take a look at the source code of the caches. For example, the level 2 cache. Here in the Stratus folder, we have the tickle for the high level synthesis. As you can see from these nested loops, by running the HLS target, we generate multiple implementation of the caches with different configuration parameters. And uh, in this case, we are only generated two different types but you can modify these parameters as you please. Once the HLS completes, you can find the generated caches in the tech folder under the, Vir under the Virtex 7 technology, which is the target FPGA technology for the VC707 FPGA. And then if you go inside SCCS, that's where the Verilog is. The wrappers for the memories internal to the caches instead are generated in the memgen folder. At this point, we are all set to start full system RTL simulation of the SOC uh, that we saw in the ESP GUI. All you need to do is to run make sim. This is for model sim, which is the recommended tool for RTL simulation in ESP. ESP also supports incisive and the make target changes to make NC sim. To also open the GUI, uh, for example, for debug purposes, you add GUI to the target. In this case, we're going to run the simulation within the terminal. Now, when you launch the simulation target for the first time, it starts by compiling some Xilinx IPs. This, take, this step takes a few minutes, but it's a one-time thing. Um, then the target compiles the RTL of the ESP SOC and after that it compiles a bare metal application to run in simulation as well as on FPGA. At last it launches model sim. We can then start the simulation within model sim with the command run and this is the default application running running which is expected to print on screen the string hello from ESP again we skip to the end of the simulation and we can see the printout in the terminal and notice that the failure program completed simply indicates the program completion it is not a real failure message After RTL simulation, we are ready for FPGA prototyping. As I said before, the MakeSim target also compiles a bare metal application, which we will also run on FPGA. There is a sub-target uh, of the simulation that is MakeSoft to only compile the software. These files are created for simulation. There's a bootloader and then the program itself and the binaries are the corresponding files but for execution on FPGA. SysTest is, this, this is the name of the default bare metal application that you can find in your design folder. Then we also want to compile Linux. Notice that Linux gets compiled separately in each design folder where you will also find the root file system in a directory called sysroot. If you modify anything in the sysroot folder, you have to run the make Linux target again. This allows user to maintain a different Linux configuration and file system overlays for each design folder. As soon as Linux is compiled, we can move to the next step, which is the generation of the FPGA IP stream. For the bstream generation, we simply run make vivado sin, and once the bstream is ready, we will find a soft link called top bit pointing to the bstream. 
to program the FPGA, we use the make FPGA program target. But we need to set two variables called FPGA host and Xilinx hardware server port. You can see them at the end of the local make file. The default values are for the case when the FPGA is attached directly to your host machine. If instead, like in my case, your FPGA is connected to a remote machine, you should set these variables accordingly. Alternatively, you can set these variables when launching the makefile target. By running make FPGA program, we are now downloading the bitstream on FPGA. In the meantime, we can open a serial communication program, in this case Minicom, and connect it to the UART link of the FPGA. In my case, the FPGA is connected to the port TTY USB 5. To find out to which serial interface you connected your FPGA to, you can run the message right after connecting the FPGA. You can pass the required baud rate with the dash B argument. You should also configure your serial interface with no parity bits and no flow control. The written guide for this tutorial shows more details on this. At last, we can finally test on FPGA. First, we execute the default Hello ESP bare metal program with the make FPGA run. You can see the printout in Minicom. Then we can launch Linux on the ESP instance on FPGA. You can do that with make FPGA run Linux. After uploading the Linux image to the FPGA memory, the ESP link program sends a reset to the Leon 3 processor core, which starts booting as you can see in Minicom. You can then log in with the username and password shown toward the end of the boot. For the Leon 3, you have to set the Ethernet IP manually. Just copy the list IP and run ifconfig eth0 and the IP. If you run ifconfig, then after that you can see the newly set IP. So finally, we can SSH into the ESP instance on the FPGA. For example, we can also use SCP to copy data remotely to the ESP instance. SSH and SCP work also the other way around from ESP to your host machine. So this is all for this tutorial. We hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know if you have any comments or feedback. You can find more tutorials and documentation on our website. And to stay tuned with the latest ESP features, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our mailing list, and follow us on GitHub and Twitter.